being a successful investor does not require super intellect, exclusive information or large amounts of capital for that matter. Instead, what is required is a sound framework that helps you make the right decisions, combined with executing it without emotions. The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham presents such a framework that helps you stay rational as you interact with the market, which is often driven by fear and greed. Graham is arguably one of the most successful investors. But what is most impressive about him is that he could replicate this success to his disciples. Among his many disciples is Warren Buffett, one of the best investors of all time. Anyone who is into investing knows Warren Buffett, and that's for a good reason. Well, quoting Warren Buffett, he refers to this book as the best book on investing ever written. I don't know about you, but if one of the greatest investors of all time says a book is good, then I know for a fact that I'm going to study this book carefully. In today's video, I will share with you my greatest takeaway from the book. But before I do that, I would appreciate it if you could take 3 seconds of your time to like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Takeaway number 1. How the market works. Suppose you own a part of a business in which you invested $5,000 to acquire. Every day, the market knocks on your doors, offering his opinion about how much your share of the business is worth. Additionally, he also gives you the option to buy or sell shares of the business. Well, here's the thing about the market. It is driven by fear and greed. Therefore, the market's opinion about how much your part of the business is worth can sometimes be way off. Suppose he estimates that your shares are worth 5000 at the beginning of the year. By the end of the year, the market thought that your shares are worth $3,000. As an insider, you know that the business has been booming and the net profit has increased by 30%. In this case, would you agree with the market's opinion about the value of your business? Of course not. This is an excellent opportunity to acquire more of the business at a discounted rate. Graham emphasizes that a stock is not just a ticker symbol with a price tag in his book. A stock represents an ownership interest in a business and the underlying value of the business can differ from the price that the market is pricing it. Graham advises us only to invest if we are okay to hold the stock without monitoring the constant short-term fluctuations in price. Staring at the short-term fluctuations may cause you to get emotional and make poor decisions. For the investor who can remain rational and keep his head cool, the market offers a tremendous opportunity to make money. The market does not hold a gun to your head and force you to strike a deal with him. The market merely shows you what is being offered. Therefore, stay rational and only buy when prices are low and sell when prices are high. When Graham wrote this book in 1949, investors had lesser news and opinions hitting them. Today, we get bombarded with information from everywhere, in our emails, from Twitter, on Facebook, and even on a train to work. But just because this information is there does not mean that you must act on everything you hear. Always stay rational and determine if the market is offering a stock at a good price. If not, ignore it and get on with your day. Takeaway number two, becoming a defensive investor. According to Graham, there are two types of investors. The defensive or the enterprising one. The defensive investor is otherwise known as a passive one and is best suited for most people since they cannot spend all day studying the companies. A defensive investor should have a good mix of bonds and stocks in his portfolio. Now, this book is not about exact allocation, so I won't touch on the allocation percentages. However, it would be best if you allocated your asset per your life situation and risk tolerance. Remember to do an asset reallocation a couple of times each year as the market moves. As a defensive investor, you want to invest a fixed amount of capital regularly, a strategy that is called dollar cost averaging. This will allow you to acquire your investments at a fair average price. More importantly, it will ensure that you do not enter the bulk of your investment at the wrong time. Here are seven guidelines that Graham teaches in his book to become an excellent defensive investor. Number one, seek diversification in the companies you invest in. 
anywhere between 10 to 30 companies will be sufficient. Make sure that your holdings are not all concentrated in a particular sector or industry. Number two, the companies should be multinational corporations that are generating at least 100 million yearly. Depending on when you watch this video, do make sure to account for inflation. Number three, look for companies that have liquid assets. One way to measure this is to check if the company has a current ratio of at least 200%. What this means is that they have current assets that are at least twice as their current liabilities. Number four, check to see if dividends have been paid out to shareholders for the past 20 years. Dividends being distributed is a good sign that the company is doing well. Remember, as a defensive investor, we are looking for safe investments, not aggressive investments where the companies plow back all the earnings. Number five, similar to the previous guideline, you want to look for companies that have no earning deficit in the last 10 years. You want to see at least 33% growth in earnings during those 10 years. That translates to an increase of about 2.9% annually. Number six, avoid overpaying for assets by looking at the price and net asset value. You should not pay more than 1.5 times the net asset value for a stock. To calculate the net asset value, subtract the company's liabilities from its assets. Number seven, avoid overpaying for earnings. When looking at the last 12 months earnings, don't purchase a stock with a price to earnings ratio that is higher than 15. Takeaway number three, becoming an enterprising investor. Well, for all of you who prefer to take on the challenge of finding excellent companies and are not afraid of putting in the work required, then listen closely. It is going to require patience, discipline, and a whole lot of time. Many investors are not suited for this and it is very easy to influence by the prices offered by the market. The markets tend to overvalue companies that have been growing fast or are gaining some form of publicity. On the opposite end, the market also tends to undervalue those not doing well currently. For the enterprising investor, price is truly an important factor. The intelligent investor should avoid growth stock as much as possible. Remember, we are trying to do value investing, not growth investing. Now you might ask, why does Graham advise against growth investing? Because you are making the investment decision based on the company's future earnings and projection. It is a very risky business compared to making decisions based on current valuations. If you can find a company that is valued lower than its net working capital, you are essentially paying nothing for all of the company's fixed assets. To determine net working capital, subtract total liabilities from current assets. While such companies made Graham a lot of money, it is extremely rare to find these companies except during a crisis. Therefore, Graham provides another alternative method of finding good investments. This alternative method is similar to that of the defensive investor, except that the constraints are looser. It allows the enterprising investor to consider more companies since there is no constraint in company size. Additionally, diversification isn't a hard rule under this alternative method, though it should still be applied. Takeaway number four, concept of margin of safety. The margin of safety is probably one of the most important concepts taught in the intelligent investor. There will always be an element of risk when it comes to investing, no matter how logical an investment is. You can, however, do your best to minimize this risk. To do this, you have to ensure that every investment you make has a margin of safety. Earlier, I mentioned that the price and value of a company could differ drastically. Having a safety of margin means that the stock price is at most two-thirds of its calculated value. To give you an example, if you found a stock ABC that is trading at $60 but has a calculated value of $100, that stock is said to have a safety margin of $40 and it meets the criteria. 
having a margin of safety is essential because there will be instances where your calculation is wrong. Therefore, having a sufficient margin of safety will cushion against any errors in your calculations. To help you calculate the value of a company, Graham provides the following formula. Value of a company equals to current earnings times 8.5 plus 2 times expected annual growth rate. When determining the expected annual growth rate, use the expected yearly growth rate of earnings for the next 7 to 10 years. You can also apply this formula to determine how fast a company must grow in the coming 7 to 10 to 10 years and whether today's prices are rational. It is a potent formula if used correctly. If you run this formula on Apple and Amazon, you will find that Amazon is predicted to grow at 74% while Apple is expected to grow at 5.8%. Between the two, which do you think is more rational? Using this formula, you will undoubtedly avoid investing in Amazon. Takeaway number 5. More risk doesn't always equate to more reward. A typical quote in investing is that more risk equates to more reward. It is otherwise known as the trade-off between risk and reward. Graham disagrees with this statement and argues that the price and value often has a margin of difference. Therefore, the return that an investor makes is a function of how skilled he is in finding bargain stocks at a good price. The defensive investor who doesn't put much effort into starting the companies and his selection will likely make a minimal return. On the other hand, the enterprising investor will probably make superior returns as he puts in the time and effort to find the best bargains. To illustrate this point, consider two examples. In the first example, you buy a company for 55 cents on the dollar. You have a great potential reward of 45 cents and a risk of 55 cents assuming the company goes broke. In the second example, you find a company in which you pay 30 cents on the dollar. In this case, you have found a better investment opportunity with a higher reward of 70 cents with a risk of 30 cents. Between the two, it is obvious that it is less risky to buy the second company. This explains why more risk doesn't always equate to more reward. And that's my five takeaways from the book, The Intelligent Investor. Here's a quick recap of the takeaways. Firstly, the market does not always price the value of a company accurately. Do not let the market influence your valuation of a company and use the mispricing as an opportunity to acquire stocks at a low price. Secondly, a defensive investor should opt for a diversified portfolio of stocks and bonds where stocks are acquired at a low price. Thirdly, an enterprising investor should also aim for stocks priced cheaply. If he can find a company that is priced below its net working capital, that is an excellent investment. Insisting on a marginal safety is the fourth takeaway. And finally, we have takeaway number five, which explains that more risk doesn't equate to more profit. Hopefully you found value from this video. As always, if you benefited from this video, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Click the notification icon so you won't miss any of our, our new videos. Do leave us a like to support this channel. Do you think Graham's advice is still applicable today? Let us know in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and make sure you download the free day trading guide via the link in the description below.